Okay, um, hello. Uh, thank you very much for everybody that made it. Um, muchísimas gracias a los que están aquí. Um, I'm going to go a little bilingual, I'll speak more English and Spanish, but I'll mix in the Spanish there, a little uh, Spanglish. Um, I'm very grateful to be here, guys. Um, I'm very, very grateful to be a Magmon ambassador. Uh, it's one of the greatest blessings for me um, since I started my photography journey because this is a company that I really, really believe in and I will never endorse somebody that I don't uh, believe in. And uh, so with that being said, um, I'm gonna talk a, few, a little bit about some of the images here, explain how I got them done and the modifiers I use. Feel free to ask me any questions regarding the image that we go through. Cool? Okay, uh, para los que no hablan inglés, uh, voy a pasar imágenes. Y uh, uh, todas estas imágenes se hicieron con eh, los modificadores de Magmar. Y si tienen preguntas, um, conforme la imagen, uh, me pueden preguntar, ¿ok? Thank you. All right. So really quick, I'm from Monterey, California. Um, who's been to Monterey? Monterey, Monterey. Okay, so beautiful Monterey, California. I highly recommend all of you guys have to be there at least once. It's really beautiful. And I'm um, very proud to have my studio there, guys. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Can anybody guess what I used here? The light modifier. Yes. No, I mean. The sphere. The sphere. Partly, yes. But let's talk about them, too. Okay. Can you tell the light's very focused? Can you tell the light's very focused? Okay, so when we're guessing, no. close, close, close. Grids. So I used two grids for this image. I used three lights, max sphere in the back with a CTO, half CTO gel because this room was really dark. So it pretty much, uh, uh, it created light everywhere, right? and it gave me that warm light. And I used uh, the grid on each uh, individual. It was about 12 feet away from them on an 8200. So the way I, I create these images is I first start, you know, with my idea of what I'm gonna do with them posing wise, you know, and, um, and then I start lighting up. I first started with the back room and then I introduce, I always expose for my ambient yet I want my subject to have, to pop. So basically they have to have more light than my ambient light, okay? So once I got the lighting on them, boom, we created that with two um, 8200s, um, a grid on each one, okay? This one uh, was done at a workshop in Mexico City. Uh, can you guys guess? Very easy. Um, it's really focused, can you tell? So basically this was right, it was a an old, sort of overcast day um, and it was right around sunset with an overcast day. You don't really need a lot of light. Um, and basically I exposed for my background first. That's the first thing I do. So a lot of people ask me, how do you get an image like this done? You, you have to turn off your flashes. You cannot try to expose with the flash on. You have to make sure that you expose for your background first, you get a good exposure, and then uh, you introduce the light. So I had two 8200s, one pointing on each girl with the mag, mag grid. Okay? No Questions? Sphere? What's that? No, no, no sphere. Because in this case, they're kind of close. They're probably about three feet from each other. If I use the mag sphere, it's gonna spill a lot of light. Uh, so I used a grid to really focus the light. The lights were about six feet from the, each girl. So, two grids? so I had two. Okay. I had two assistants, and you could use your uh, light stems if you don't have an assistant, but each assistant, and it was pointed uh, vertically because vertically you get more of the body and the person, so if you do horizontally, you get a little bit more spread. Any questions? Yes. How do you get this dynamic in the picture? How do you get, do you get this dynamic in the picture? 
picture with uh, from each other? Okay. Great question. So uh, my the the dynamic of this uh, image here, we have a lot of detail in the entire image. Um, in this case, it was a bit overcast. Therefore, I could capture a lot of detail. But if you're very sunny and it's, it's very sunny and your, your shadows are really dark and your highlights are really, really, really light, you expose for your highlights all the time, except you want to make sure you have uh, detail in your shadows. So with your camera, all, most cameras nowadays, they have great dynamic range. Uh, you, you might want to overexpose your highlight by about a stop because you know you can recover it and you will recover all the shadows. In this case, this image was really easy because it was overcast, not too much uh, shadow and highlight. I exposed for my highlights, but there is still not too much highlight. Um, and what you do in uh, shoot raw, right? Uh, in post-processing, you recover all the shadows through Lightroom um, and highlights and shadows and then take it to Photoshop. I use Nick Collection. It's great for the HDR. I use it I, very minimal. You don't want to do it too much. And it brings all the rich colors. You can play with the uh, slider on the tonalities. That's what I do. One shot. One shot, yes. So, she, great question. So if you're using Nick, right, HDR, um, I use it a lot. Uh, what you do, you mask it. So you create a, a, a you duplicate your layer and uh, you mask, once you, you bring it into Photoshop, you mask it. Um, and you mask it with the opacity too. And um, no, yeah, I always make sure my skin doesn't look HDR. You don't want your skin to look HDR. So it's made everything else, and then you add a little bit of contrast. Cool? All right. This is one of my favorite shots. Um, this is a real wedding. Okay, this is Monterey, guys. You guys gotta go. So beautiful. Um, so we got there and the sun looked amazing. The colors were amazing. And um, I saw this like little rock form there. And one of the things that I think distinguishes my style of work is I like to have dynamic in my posing. Um, you know, I think it's very easy once you learn how to expose and do your lighting, it's very easy to get your couples to just do this, but that's not that easy. You have to have more of a creative vision. That's when you have to really think out of the box. So what you do is, okay, I saw my vision. I saw the colors. I know the exposure. I already know I want to use the 8200s with the grids. Okay. I already knew that in my head because I wanted uh, control, full control. Um, I, uh, I chose to pose her first. I started with her and then with him. And then if you look at it, it makes sense because they're both looking out the same way. Just two grids, that's it. Two grids, two 8200s. And when I have separation, I don't use one light. I use two to light them off, uh, but with the grid. Cool? How far is the light? Them to or the light? The light to the subject about eight feet. Yeah. Yeah, the 8200s are really powerful. They're really, really powerful, so yeah. And that was, I think, if I'm not, I can remember this image very well. It was F13, my exposure. F13, 200 shutter. So you got all those rich tones. The lens? No, the light, like, like the actual light, like the actual flash. Oh, you flash with the, with the grid. Yeah, but like 1.32 or? Oh, I, I can't remember that. The, the, the settings of the light, I won't remember. Um, I just... I have my my LCD where it matches my computer, and if it looks good, I do it. If it doesn't, I drop the exposure. I don't even look at no. I don't use a light meter, and I don't use a meter on my on my camera except for when I'm doing the exposure, but not for flash. If it looks good, it's good, you know, for me. All right, same scenario. Okay, going back to dynamic posing, guys. I love dynamic posing because I think if you guys want to take your work to the next level, seriously, 
lighting and your posing, but not just any posing. You want dynamic posing, okay? Um, this is one of my favorite images because this is a beautiful uh, building with columns and you got triangles, you got a lot of uh, shapes, you know? But I was very, very careful when I did this image. Um, I used two 8200s with grids, okay? Now here, I did it differently. I don't know if you could tell, but he's broad lit and she's short lit. So there's a light coming here and there's a light coming here. The reason I did that is because she's a little more forward and there were, I couldn't get both lights to hit one another and they were really close. So I broad lit him and it's okay because he's a guy. So I wanted her to have the best light. Um, so another thing I took care of, you know, there's dynamic posing. It looks very, uh, you could tell it looks very editorial. Uh, so, you know, you want to have shape in her. He want, you want him to look cool. But um, one of the things that if you pay attention to this image and the other one that I just showed you, this one right here, pay attention to this, guys, my composition. They are perfectly framed. You see that? They are perfectly framed. Now, those are the things that are going to take you to the next level. Because, um, you know, a lot of times we're in a hurry. We just want to get the shot. You have to slow down. When you slow down, you will see all the, the, the details. Just slow down. I'd rather have one amazing shot than seven okay shots, you know? So if you slow down, you pay attention to that. The first shot, he kept coming like his, you know, the column was coming out of his head. So no, I wanted them perfectly framed. So slow down. That's one of my greatest tips. I learned that from Jerry Guiones. All right, guys. All right, so same couple. Um, we're at the San Francisco Palace of Fine Arts. Uh, what I did here, what, can you guys guess what modifier is? Magmon? Very close, close. I use the Max Sphere, but you know, normally with the Max Sphere, it's still a little harsher than using the Magbox, okay? What I did, I used the Max Sphere, but I pointed it at the column and the column brought light back to them. So it bounced, so now I got softer light, okay? You see that? From, yeah, so it's basically right here, the light somewhere over here, pointing here, and bam, like, so it's like a softbox. The only thing, I, since I'm shooting raw, um, you're able to change the colors in Lightroom. They were a little bit too warm because the column's warm. So they were a little warm. I just cooled them down a little bit. Yeah, you correct the white balance. That's it. Very easy. And, you know, we watch the pose. They're looking out that way. And, uh, yeah, that's what I did. Did you use uh, gels to... You know, match the ambient light? No, I, on this I just used a max here. A max here and I was shooting, I believe in, my white balance was flash. Uh, but the column was warm. And because I was bouncing the light into the column, it was giving them a warmer light. So in post-processing, I just adjusted my tonalities. Okay, I shot this with 70 to 200. Uh, a tip for, you know, a lot of these are just starting out. Um, if you, 7200 is one of my favorite lenses. Uh, when I'm using the 7200, for the most part, I'm shooting at 200 millimeters. I will get as back as I can, okay? And 2.8, if you have a very good lens, like with Canon or Sony or Nikon, whatever you use with, uh, uh, try to buy the best lenses. Um, sharpness is everything to me. So I'm at 200 and it gives you that beautiful bouquet. Mm, it's gorgeous. All right. Um, dynamic posing. Okay, guys. Uh, so that's another thing. I do not like, you know, this could have been a really beautiful shot of them like doing this, right? Everybody does that though. Don't you want to stand out? Don't you want to be the one photographer in your area that doesn't do the shot like this? Okay, so, so steady posing. What you do is you pose one person first. And who do you start with if you have a bride and groom? You always start with the bride first. You want her to look the best. 
You want him to look cool. You want her to look beautiful, okay? And as long as she looks beautiful, I don't care how he looks, she's going to buy that image, okay? Right, girls? Who, who cares how my husband looks? I don't care. I, <laughs> By the way, this is my husband, Mike Diaz, for those of you that don't know. We've been married for 16 years, and we have four children. Um, anyhow, so this was a, what I call a lighting composite. Uh, basically, uh, Photoshop has this really cool, neat uh, tool. But I mean, what is it called? The, 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 the composite in, what is it called? Huh? Auto align. Okay, I know it, but I just didn't know the name of it. Okay, so what you do is you try to not move. Especially in a scenario like this, it's very easy because it's natural. It's a little harder with building, with structure. But even with structure, you can get it done as long as you don't move. There's going to be slight movement, but try to stay as still as possible. So this was three shots. 180, 200 with the max here. That's it. One light. My daughter, I took a shot without my daughter and they were pitch, they were dark. I exposed from my ambient, right? I'm not moving. My kids, they know what they have to do. So They're trained. So I'm ha I don't take a tripod. I'm sorry. I don't have time for that on a wedding day, you know? So I'm like this. I get my composition and my daughter, she already knows it's three shots. So I do, I do this shot without, and it's just, they look dark. I do the, the, the background, right? The exposure. And then comes my daughter, lights her up, runs to the back. She's right behind the bride, right around here, lighting him up right there. So you got two lights coming in, very dynamic. You see the shadow. He's got some sunlight there and boom, really cool. Yeah, so then you, there's three images. So you take it to Photoshop and use auto align. Okay, my buddy here, he's really good with Photoshop. So it's, you, you do a, um, I have to look at it to, to remember, you know? But you go to a file. Automate. Automate. File. Okay. Remind me, guys, I'll put it on the Magmod group, okay? <laughs> but anyways, it's super easy. It's like a piece of cake. And it aligns it for you. And then you just erase the edges or you stretch it a little bit. You, you end up losing like, like 0 0.5 of the image. And you got a gorgeous image. So that's another tip, guys, for those of you that want to do a, an image like this. If you only have one light and one assistant, it can be done. Okay, so for this shot, um, I'm using my beloved 11 to 24. I was really wide. But um, what I did, this was around 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, you have the light, the sunlight. Where's the sun? It's high. It is not in the back, right? So what did I do? Magma to the rescue. I got two 8200s with two uh, CTOs. And I put them about 10 feet behind the... Um, the what do you call it the barn in the back and i put those at full power and i exposed for that and then i had my couple i posed them there one max here to with an 8200 camera right and there you go so i made it look like a sun like it's like gold golden light right it was in golden light it was cto's at 12 o'clock cool the lights inside the building or outside outside the building about 10 feet, because the further the light is, the more spread you get. So I wanted spread, because you, you see the light coming in? You see that? Okay. It makes it look like the sun. Because think about it, the sun looks really small, right? Because it's so far away, it's so small. So therefore the light tends to be harsh and it spreads. I use, um, yeah, um, tall, like, I, I, I believe they're about 10 feet. Yeah, pretty high. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you guys think I used here? Magbox. Magbox, okay. So this day was also a little overcast. Um, and uh, 
when it's overcast, you have a little bit more control and you don't need that much power. And also the light is a little bit softer. You could use a max here and make the light look soft too when it's overcast because you're really giving a kiss of light. So basically I exposed from my background. It was overcast, but the sunset is in that direction. So there was still detail in the mist, the, the clouds. There's a little bit of detail there. So um, I, I got a beautiful composition there. And then we got this light here. It wasn't turned on. I just added a little flare, light flare there from post-processing. Gives it more, you know, like a romantic look. But just one, um, uh, I use a mag box with, uh, I believe, 18200. Huh. Any questions? Yes. I use the Focus Diffuser. That's the one I use all the time. I have the other one too. I forgot what the name of it is, but um, I use the diffuser, more control. And I don't really find a difference as far as the quality of light. It gives me more power. Same uh, couple. They change outfits, same location. Okay. So that was real mist. So we had mist. When you have mist, guys, or fog, take advantage of the mist and fog. Don't be like, oh man, it's misty, it's foggy. No, that's when backlighting is magic. Because see the mist, you see how beautiful that looks with the backlight? And I always like to put like a CTO, make it warm. And then if you're, if it's uh, foggy, same thing. Now you have like light coming out, really cool. Uh, CTO, and then I use the mag box as my main light. Did you warm your main light at all? No, just the backlight. My main light, I'm using, you know what? I believe that I, I was in cloudy, which warmed up the image. Okay? This is my baby girl. She's only 15. I know she looks older. Um, so they were heading out to uh, Winter Ball, and um, that's one of her best friends, the same age. Uh, her mom and I are very good friends. Her mom's a wedding coordinator, and contacts me and said, "Christine, I'm gonna go take pictures of my daughter with a uh, with you know my phone, and we got a motorcycle. You you want to come?" And, and 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 she goes, "You can bring your phone." Like, come on, oh. like really. Do you really think she'd call me so I could take my phone? You know what she wanted. She wanted free pictures. <laughs> so I'm like, girl, I got you. I'm taking my stuff, right? So I took my mag box and a couple 83, uh, 8200s with my gels. And the way I lit this, again, what did I say I love to do? Dynamic posing. I challenge you guys to do that. And you know what? Don't copy someone else's pose because it never comes out. It's never going to come out. You have to go with the feeling. If it feels good, it's good. Do, if you try to, has that ever happened when you try to copy someone else's pose and it doesn't come out? Because the energy is not there. The, the person doesn't have the body type. So to me, one, my daughter is really tall. She's like oh, my height. She's really tall. And she, her friend is like a foot shorter. So... Right away, I knew her friend had to be standing. My daughter had to be sitting, right? So I said, my, my, my daughter has a very exotic look to her. She loves mini dresses. I can't get her to wear dresses like me. But see? anyways, so she's wearing this dress and she gives me the look. My daughter, she's so good at it. She just like, she has great posture. So I sat her there. I, I got her where I wanted. She gives me the look. And then her friend was a little bit, can you believe this girl? She's really shy. She doesn't look shy, does she? So your job is to get the best out of that, that person, okay? So I got her to stand up. At first I got her right here, it wasn't working. Then I moved her and she's really, really petite, really tiny. I have the tendency when I'm posing, always uh, to bend the knee that's closest to the camera and have them do this, which makes them smaller here. But with her, she's so tiny, she could do this. Give her more hip, you know? So I did that. I told him, give me attitude. I had my friend, I had her like standing over here. I want you guys to look at her hand. And I used one um, mag box and I used a CTO with an 8200 in the back. You see the flare? That was real flare coming in. And boom, you got this dynamic. Now, not just dynamic posing, dynamic composition. If you look at the 
whatever these thingies are, they are both perfectly framed. Again, if you guys slow down, one of the things I learned from my, my buddy here, Ramiro Cervantes, Hala, my buddy Ramiro is also a Magmon ambassador and one of my many mentors. Um, one of the things he taught me, him and Jerry Guiones taught me, was to slow down. When you slow down, seriously, magic happens. A lot of times we're, we're shooting and it's just like, blah, 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 blah. you want to, oh my gosh, the sunset. Da, 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 da. No, slow down. I'd rather have one amazing image than seven, eight, okay images. Okay? Did you put fog in this at all? It Nothing. Easy. Nothing. Oh, um, in post, I, I have my little secret. <laughs> I do have like my, my own style of editing that I, that I do, a little secret sauce, but um, I use curves a lot. And gradient, the gradient tool will be your, your friend, okay? But again, dynamic posing, beautiful lighting, dynamic composition, guys, and you have magic, okay? Another one of my baby girl. So I love the light here. Um, I'm using the, the mag box. Yeah, and I'm just down 24 to 70. And really low, boom, one light. Mag box. How are we doing with time, guys? You know? Three minutes. Uh, three minutes? Let me hurry up. Okay. My vintage lights. Love those lights. I put an 8200 there, guys, with a CTO, and now it looks like Hollywood. Isn't it old Hollywood? And my uh, mag box. Okay? So exposed for my background. And I turn on the lights of the car, and boom, you got that shot. You put your flash inside? I put the flash, in, it's got a door, and I have four of those babies. Super heavy, 50 pounds. So I put the, the flash, because it also has a continuous light, really, really hot. So what I did, I removed it, and I just put the flash. The flash gives me more power, and it doesn't get hot. CTO. I think we're, okay, almost, almost done. 280 200s, guys, with the full CTOs and composite. Remember what I just told you? I had one assistant right here with the mags here. She, her job was like, shot him, shot her, get out of the frame, three shots. Boom, boom. Really quick. What's that? She's right here. She's on, she was like right here. So she's like, this was one night, one, two, one, two, gets out. So I got three shots and then merge them all in, in, in Photoshop. No tripod. You just stay still. You you instruct your assistant, and you're like, click. They know. Turn around. Click. Don't move. Click. Boom. Okay. All right. Same thing here. Um, 8200 max here, and I had another 8200 here max here. Click. Click. Exposed for my background. Beautiful Carmel mission. Okay, we're good. I made it. All right. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you for those of you that came.